What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. In this video, we're gonna talk about some advanced formatting options for small multiples visuals. Specifically, we're gonna talk about how you can sort your small multiple items, and we're also gonna talk about how to paginate your small multiples visual so that you're only ever showing a finite number of small multiples in one view. This video is going to start where my previous video on how to dynamically show different categories within a small multiples visual ended. If you wanna go check out that video, it's a really cool trick. The link will be down in the description. So basically we were able to select a specific column in order to show within our small multiples visual. Right now we're showing the total sales by retailer country. If I were to select retailer type, we're now showing the total sales by retailer type. So that's as far as we got in the previous video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to apply some sort of ranking or sorting to this small multiples visual. And then we're gonna cover pagination so that we only ever show six small multiples and we don't have a scroll bar on the right side. So to get us started, I'm gonna to go to our file that we left off on. If you wanna download this file to use as your starting point as well, um, the link to download that will be in the description of the video I've been referencing. So as you can see, there are two problems with this. Uh, one, our categories are sorted alphabetically, and by default, the small multiples visual uh, is only going to allow you to sort based on the category name, either ascending or descending. So right now we're sorting by uh, category descending. If we sort by category ascending, it'll sort it just as you might expect. Australia is our first country. And actually all the way down at the bottom, we're gonna see United States, which is actually the country with our most sales. So we don't want that to be at the very bottom. Similarly, if we sort based on order method type, we see our seven uh, order method types with web being our last one, but that's the one that gives us the most total sales. So we don't want that at the bottom. So I'm gonna show you quickly how you can sort this based on a calculation or logic so that you can sort based on our total sales. Instead of uh, alphabetically, we'll show the ones with the most total sales at the top and the ones with the smallest total sales at the bottom. So that's gonna cover our sorting piece. And then I'm gonna show you how to paginate so that uh, in this view, when we have seven, we are actually only going to show six. And then we can go to the second page to show that leftover item. So to get us started, we're going to look at our data and let's look at our slicer table. Uh, this was built in our previous video. We have our three different selection types. Uh, so we have retailer type, retailer country, and order method type. And we have our categories that are gonna make up the small multiple selections. So at this point, we just need to create a couple columns in order to rank these categories based on their total sales. So I'm gonna break this down into two different columns to make it nice and easy to understand. I'm gonna go ahead and right click, uh, create a new calculated column, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste in some code I've already written. I'm gonna call this total sales and set that equal to two variables. The first variable is called current selection and it's simply giving us the selection for the row that we're currently looking at. Same thing for the category, we're just grabbing the category. And then we're just returning a simple switch statement. We're checking to see if our current selection is either retailer type, order method type, or retailer country. And then simply we're calculating our total sales where our retailer type equals our category or our order method type equals our current category or finally, if our retailer country equals our current category. So if I click enter there, that's simply giving me the total sales for each individual category selection combo. And the reason I had to do it this way is because there are no relationships between our two tables. Our sales table being the table that has all of our important data and our slicer table being that kind of dynamic table that lets us do the dynamic filtering. So there's no relationship between those two tables. So it's all handled within the measure logic. So that's why we kind of have to get a little bit creative with the code in order to get the total sales for this specific category. But once we have that correct calculation, we can easily create a ranking column based on our selection category combo. I'll go ahead and create this new column and we can type this one together. I'm gonna to call this ranking. I'm gonna set this equal to a variable. I'm gonna call this current selection. I'm gonna set that equal to our selection column again. And finally, we're going to return a quick rank X function. The table that we're going to pass in is going to be a filtered table. So we're gonna use the filter uh, keyword there. We're gonna filter our slicer table that we're currently on. And I want to filter it where the selection column equals our current selection. So this is giving me only the rows where our selection equals the current selection of our row. And then next, our ranking expression is gonna be based on our total sales column. So on my slicer table, I have a column called total sales, the column we just created. And then finally, 
give it a couple commas to get over to the order. I want to order descending. So our largest total sales have the smallest ranking. Uh, for example, our largest total sales will have the ranking of one. And let's close off our rank X. And that's everything we need for our ranking. So if I were to just look at a single selection, such as retail or country, we can order by ranking. And we have one through 21. And if we look at a different category, like order method type, or different selection rather, uh, we have our ranking starting over at one through seven. So that's perfect. Um, you might be wondering to yourself if we can simply uh, sort our categories based on this ranking column. If we try that, we're gonna get an error that's going to detect a circular dependency. So that is no good. Um, in order to actually finish out the sorting, we have to go to our visualization and within our visualization, we can actually throw our ranking directly into the small multiples. So you can see it's kind of appending that ranking at the very beginning and showing our number and then the actual category name. And then all we have to do is one more sort based on our ranking category. Let's sort ascending. And you can see that our category that has the most total sales is floating to the top. So web, as in our previous example, is number one. Sales visit is number two. Those bars are a little bit misleading because they're pretty small compared to web. But if we look at country, we'll see the United States is number one, Japan is number two, China is number three, and all the way down to the bottom where Denmark is the smallest country based on total sales. So that's already a really great step uh, towards a better small multiples visual. I just wanna add one more step where we're gonna add pagination to this uh, so that we're only ever gonna show six uh, small multiples within the same view. I'm choosing six arbitrarily. If you wanna show maybe a three by three grid, that is totally fine. It'll just change your logic just a little bit. Based on this two columns by three rows grid, we're just gonna to stick to six. So in order to set this up, we need one more calculated column. I'm going to right click, create a new column. I'm gonna call this new column page. And I'm gonna set this equal to the ceiling function. So ceiling is going to take a number and round it up to the nearest integer. So I'm gonna take my ranking divided by six. And ceiling needs a significance parameter. So I'm just gonna give it a one. So we're gonna round up to the nearest integer and close off that ceiling. So that six is important because that is the number of items we wanna show on a single page. So if we are looking at just retail or country and we're sorting by ranking, we can see that uh, rankings one through six are gonna be on page one, seven through 12 are gonna be on page two and so on. So now, if we come over and add a slicer on our page, let's just put this below our small multiples visual with our page in the field. And quickly, I'm gonna change this to greater than or equal to, and then we can try out the slicer. So right now we're on page one. It's actually still showing all of them, so we can see it's not working that well. If I were to slide to page three, for example, we're now starting with number 13, Mexico, but it goes all the way down to the end. So actually in order to finalize this, we need to click on our small multiples visual and under the category in the filters on this visual, let's click on that. Let's make sure we're on the top in filter type and change that to bottom. And we can use either page or ranking. I'm gonna use ranking here. Let's show the bottom six items based on ranking. So if we think about this, uh, based on the page we're on, we're just going to show the lowest six rankings. So if I apply that filter, now you can see our scroll bar goes away. I'm only showing six items. So 13 through 18. If I go over to my page number one, we see numbers one through six. On page two, we see numbers seven through 12. So that's working perfectly. Last thing I wanna do is I want to format our slicer interactions. I don't want our slicer down here to affect our slicer on the left side. So let's make sure that our slicer does not affect that. I want this slicer to affect this one because our retailer country has four pages, but retailer type only should have two pages. Perfect. And let's make sure everything's good. I think everything's looking pretty good there. And that's the entire trick. These couple extra formatting options make your small multiples visual work a little bit better in my opinion. Uh, I like the ability to sort. I like the ability to only show a specific number of uh, small multiples in one viewing so that the user doesn't have to scroll down and find whichever category he's looking for. I think this works a little bit nicer. Um, you do have some options for the slicer here. I am simply using 
uh, the default slicer with the greater than or equal to. It doesn't look amazing because we have this kind of grayed out option that can't change. So your page is just based on this first selection. You might be able to get a little bit crafty with this and use a what if parameter, which is only going to give you one option. Um, so it might look a little bit nicer. You can also use the play axis slicer, which I tend to like a little bit more. Uh, so you can look at play axis within the custom visuals, add that to your report and change this to a play axis slicer. So this is going to allow you just to click through and go from page one to page two. And as I do that, I realize we need to edit this interaction one more time. We need to make sure that the play axis filters our small multiples visual. So now we can click between those pages. So retailer country has four pages. So we can click and click and click and page through those six individual small multiples. So that's the trick. I hope you liked this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you did like it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That is the best way to show your support of the channel and helps me continue making Power BI content. If you like the way I explain Power BI concepts, make sure you check out my training over at training.biaelite.com. We have some awesome training courses on Power BI, DAX, Alteryx, and SQL. The link is down in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.